Hello and welcome to Looking Back at the NCAA Champions. Today we will look back at the 1997 Arizona Wildcats, one of the top teams in the history of the program. Uh, and I am so fortunate today to be joined by Leah O'Brien Amico, a star on that team. Welcome, Leah. Thank you. I'm excited to be here with you, Roger. So let's start with, before we get to 1997, I want to go back to 1996, because you had a decision to make, which anybody would make that decision. And um, But tell me about the decision you had to make and what that was like, and maybe your conversations with Coach Candrea. Yeah, the previous fall, actually, in 1995, I was fortunate and honored to be able to attend the first ever Olympic tryout, and I was named to that roster of 15 women. And once I was named to that, and they came out with the training schedule, and they knew that we would have to report in April, of 1996 to Columbus, Georgia, in order to prepare for the upcoming Olympic Games, I realized that I would not be able to compete in my senior season and would have to put that off for a year. So Kandre was very supportive and he knew that was the decision. The crazy thing was that we had graduated two of the best players, the best slapper, Amy Tovold and Laura Espinoza, two All-Americans. And then I, I was an All-American that had to redshirt as well as our catcher had gotten pregnant, Leah Bratz, and Nancy Evans had broken her foot. And so there were five All-Americans that had to miss that season, three of us that had to red shirt. So we did all come back the next season. Yeah, you, so you led me right into my, my question was, um, while you were <laughs> winning a gold medal with Team USA, your Arizona Wildcats happened to win a national championship, probably a little unexpected, but uh, with Dolan and, and some of the other players really stepped up. But so let's talk about that. You head into 1997. This team won a national championship, had a good core coming back. And like you said, you're back now. Nancy Evans, one of the best pitchers in Arizona history, and Rots also come back. So as you guys headed into the season, you clearly had to be very confident. We were so proud of that 1996 team. And actually, Jenny Dalton, she was the one that got the winning home run. They were trying, Washington was trying to pitch around her. She was actually my roommate throughout college. So I was sad that I couldn't finish out my career with her. Her and I had come in together. and But then we did come back and we had that experience of those players who had won that previous championship when, like you mentioned, there weren't a lot of expectations. It's not, not the normal Arizona softball because of how many players they had lost. But they found a way, and it was leadership and how they did that. And for us, we did have Carrie Dolan and Nancy Evans in the circle. We had the power of Leah Bratz. We had Allison Johnson, the best slapper. And, you know, I was a senior now that year. So we did have a lot of veteran returners and a lot of expectations, again, and really wanted to continue the tradition that so many teams previous that I had been a part of, as well as that 96 team, had kept going. So the numbers for the 97 regular season are, are pretty staggering. You went 54 and four in the regular season, uh, 26 and one in the, in the best conference in the country in the Pac-10. You had five first team All-American players. Um, you, you had every, there was, of the players on the team who had at least 10 at-bats, um, everyone but one player hit over 300. How good was that team during the regular season? You know, we just continued to get better. Candrea had built a winning tradition and he brought in elite athletes and playing with the best will make you better. And every day that expectation was there and it was how we trained. And so when you train so hard and you push yourself, when you get to the games, it seems a little bit easier, a little better. And, and it's such a mindset. Winning is such a mindset. And it's easier to have that mindset when you have experience behind you, when you've had so much success, it's easy to keep that rolling and to keep that confidence. Because when you get into those really tight games, that's when you need that little extra push and that little extra confidence. But that team was was very stacked. I just, all my teams of Candrea, I have to say, have to do with our preparation. 
we were prepared to go into battle. So whenever we went into battle, the chances were usually in our favor that there was going to be a favorable outcome. And even get into the women's women's college world series that year, we did face some adversity, but Nancy Evans in the circle really kept us strong. And then our bats, Arizona has always been known for hitting Kendra. My opinion is the best hitting coach to ever coach the game in the sport of softball in the world. I was fortunate to play underneath his, his leadership. So you, uh, Arizona hosted the regional um, after having to go to Tallahassee the previous year. But you were back at home in Tucson um, and you opened with a, an 11 and 2 win over Ryder. <clears throat> and then you played a couple of games against a really good Nebraska team and a great Nebraska program. Both games were tight. I believe it was two to nothing and two to one. Um, what was the benefit of playing one, a really good program and team in Nebraska, and maybe playing some really competitive games heading into the World Series? Yeah, I think that's very important. You get to that point in the season and rankings don't matter anymore <laughs> and stats don't matter anymore. It just matters what you do, especially in those tight games. And can you fight? Can you battle? Can you keep the other team down long enough to find a way to push runs across. And I think that's important because you can have a lot of success, but the second you just start to get too high and think, you know, you're better than you are, it can really cause some tr struggles. So I think it was really good to be battle tested and to have those tight games. And I can remember us winning that final game and just almost this sigh of relief, right? Because there's a lot of expectations put on you and you are playing at home, which is great because you have home field advantage, but you still got to finish it. And so I think it was good to be tested knowing, hey, that's going to make us better uh, because again, postseason, you're going to get everybody's best. Everybody's prepared for that moment in time. And so I think that helped us going into the Women's College World Series. So you advance to the Women's College World Series and you open against UMass. That's right, people, UMass. And there was a really good reason that UMass was in the Women's College World Series, and that was because a future Olympic teammate of yours, Daniel Henderson, pitched for the Minutemen. So you guys won in eight innings. You hit an infield single in the top of the eighth inning to give you the Wildcats a two-to-one win. How good was Daniel Henderson, and, and how important was it for you guys to get that first win under your belt against a really good pitcher. Well, it's huge. It's huge to win the first game at the Women's College World Series always because then it's just such a battle to even try to get back if you lose that first game. And Danielle Henderson, we hadn't seen her yet. And, and so the way she spun the ball, that's what I remember in that moment of like, wow, this ball is really moving. She makes it very, very hard to square up a pitch. And it was Allison Johnson, our speedy leadoff hitter that had gotten onto third base. And honestly, my swing was not pretty at all. There's like a picture that <laughs> Kendra has of that swing. And I'm like, here's the thing. You realize that as long as you can get your barrel to where it needs to be, it doesn't really matter what it looks like because it was just enough to push it to that left side, to that five, six hole to be able to bring her across and, and for us to be able to pull out that win. And again, there was relief, there was thankfulness, there was excitement, but I did go on to play and win a gold medal with Danielle Henderson. And I realized how good she really was. And she was one of those athletes that flew under the radar and not a lot of people knew about her. So she's so hard to hit, but especially that first time that you see her and you don't know what she has. So game two for the Wildcats is your familiar friends from Westwood. It was Arizona and UCLA in game two. And this was probably one of the best games in uh, Women's College World Series. It went 14 innings. It was uh, Nancy Evans and Krista Williams in the circle, two of the best pitchers in the country. And you guys managed to play to run in the 14th inning and get a win. But what was it like competing against UCLA during that mid nineties? Oh, that was the big rivalry that in my opinion, were the it, UCLA was the dynasty. They were the team with all the credibility on all the notoriety. And we were the team that was up and coming. We were the team that was trying to achieve what they had done. And, accomplish that standard they had set and we wanted to be that team and we'd started to win those national championships and came up with some big wins and big moments in postseason and we're at the world series 
And so you knew that any time, I mean, all of us athletes had grown up playing against each other, usually on the national stage at national championships in travel ball. And so in that moment, you just knew, I feel like that probably was more <laughs> the final, ultimately, like, I think that game was setting up the rest of the tournament for either program. And so for us to be able to find a way and to push a win across that late um, it's fun you talking about these memories because I've forgotten so much of it. I've gone on to do so many other things, but those moments with my teammates, and I'll tell you, I actually grew up playing with Nancy Evans in travel ball. We won national championship together. And we were 14 and actually I was the pitcher at that time and Nancy was our shortstop, but to be able to have that competitor in the circle for us, leading us that way. Um, you knew you always had a shot. And then obviously Krista Williams, UCLA. I mean, I played with her on the Olympic team as well. And she was just the young arm that really was one of the top in the entire nation. So you knew the battle was going to be there. And I think the winner of that, that game, I don't know if we lost that game. I'm not sure what happens the rest of the tournament. Well, the next game you actually did lose and maybe it was a UCLA hangover, but part of it was a really, really, really good Fresno State team. You lost that game, I believe it was three to nothing, but that was when you played immediately after. So you lost to Fresno because that was your first loss. He turned around and played them immediately. And you came away with a six to three win in that second game. You fell behind, you hit a two run homer to tie the game. And then they regain the lead. And then I believe it was Lee Rotz hit a double. Maybe it was Johnson that hit a double that they eventually gave you the lead and put you guys ahead. But Fresno had a really, really good team as well. And so two two parts. One, playing them obviously was a challenge. But what what did it take for you guys to to respond and, and come back and, and win against a really good team? Well, that's why I think it was so important that we were in the winner's bracket in that situation, because it did give us that chance that it wasn't lose and go home. And so when we did drop that, I'll never forget that. That's probably one of the few games I can remember where after the game, Kendrea sat us down and immediately was talking about how we were going to approach the next game and we're going to win. It was not like looking back and all the things we did wrong. It was this very serious tone of, here we go. This is what's before us. We need to make it to where the, the umpires don't even have a chance to make this happen. This team over here right now, they think they have the momentum. It's your chance to come back and to be able to, to take it back from them. And so I think being able to face them again immediately afterward, I think really was that idea of that revenge and that wanting it more. And like you said, they were playing with that momentum. They always, Fresno always during the years I played had a top program in the nation and Margie Wright knew how to prepare her athletes as well. And so I, I think it, it really was that back and forth and digging deep and ultimately coach just preparing us and saying, I just remember thinking, I'm so glad he's our leader because he knew the sensitivity in that moment that when we were already down, he was just right there to lift us up and say, let's keep moving forward. We still got another chance and we're going to win. So it was huge. Amazing. So for the fifth time in seven years, UCLA and Arizona in the national championship camp. And I, I don't think um, you could have possibly, this was beyond your wildest dreams, I would imagine. Two innings in, you're up six to nothing, and you beat them 10 to two. First run rule game in uh, national championship history against your arch rival. I don't, I don't know if we could give much better than that, right? You know, I think once we got that big, quick start, I think you're just like, whoa, like in that, at that point, you're like, okay. And then it just started to unravel for them. They made some uncharacteristic mistakes. I think the pressure was on because it started to get, you know, the lead just started to be so big and that was so uncommon in, you know, games with UCLA, especially considering their previous game. I think it benefited us to be able to face uh, Krista again and to be able to see her later in the tournament at that point. But, you know, really, I think it was that quick jump that helped us a ton. And then we just were 
all gas, right? We just were like, just keep going, pushing on. And then in that point, you just, you just finish with that momentum. I'll never forget that game and how just the emotion in our dugout and this idea of like, like we're this close and it's going to happen. And for me, my senior year, I mean, just what a, a storybook ending to my career at University of Arizona and playing for Coach Candrea and my wonderful teammates that made me better every single day. So yeah, I, I wouldn't have expected that ever. Um, and that's something that to this day, I still think like, what a, what an amazing ending. From a, from a, let's be selfish for a little bit, just, um, you know, you had uh, chosen to go with the Olympic team in 96 and, and rightly so that would have been your senior year and you, and the Wildcats did win the national championship. So for you, 97 you're like we have to win like <laughs> right like this is so important for you as a senior to be able to win how satisfying was that for you just to be able to go out you know you won three national championships at Arizona and were a runner up some would argue a questionable runner up uh, in the <laughs> one year but but you won three national championships so how important was it for you to go out that way you know, it's what you dream of. And every single year in the start of the season, that's what your focus is. It's what your goal is. And every day you put in the work, that's that's what it's for. It's looking ahead. It's thinking about what goals you're trying to achieve. And, you know, I just remember the previous years, like the summer after we would win, it was like the best summer ever, right? You're just like, I can just enjoy it now because there's not much time to enjoy it. Because as soon as you get back to work again, it's it's like, okay, now it's a new season, all that stuff's behind you. But this was the end and for college. And so I knew I was just leaving it all behind. And I'll never forget the first workout back. We were running stadiums and McHale Center at Arizona. And our strength coach is was a, an Olympian in track and field. And she's this big, strong woman. And, and we ran stadiums and I ended up, um, I ended up coming in first like finishing first and I you know she looked over and said I see you I, I see you and I was like what are you talking about and she said I, I expected you to come back from the Olympics and just you know cruise basically and I I felt the opposite it's my senior year I should be the leader I should be the example I want to win and I want to finish on top and I need to show them I just have a gold medal I have teammates that have experience as well, but I need to be that leader. And so it truly was the best, the best ending I could have asked for. That's amazing. That is so cool. So Leah, you won three national championships. Like we talked about Arizona was 16 and three at the women's college world series with you in the lineup. You hit 563 in your women's college world series career. You led the tournament in batting three times in uh, 94, 95, and 97. Uh, and I believe it was 94, you hit 750 at the Women's College World Series. So what was it about that stage that brought out the best in you? You know, I think I, I was able to focus more in the biggest moments. And I feel like when the challenge was the greatest was when just the intensity rose that much more and being able to just want it so much for your teammates, for everything you prepared. And also it's funny. I can remember when I would be named all American at the banquet, right prior to the world series starting. And there was this interesting thought that would go through my head each time I would tell myself, okay, I'm an all American. Now I got to go prove it. <laughs> So I would enter that tournament like, let's go. I'm going to show them I deserve this award that they just gave me. And so I think it was a combination of that, wanting to prove that I deserve that, the preparation we put in all year, and then honestly, just the intensity of those biggest moments. That's when you think the least because like the fight is the hardest. And so I think those are the moments that I really was able to shine the most. So I want to I'm going to give you an opportunity to <clears throat> talk about uh, you know sadly as we go on some of the players names kind of get lost a little bit um I remember I I believe that Nancy Evans was inducted was it the Arizona Hall of Fame this fall or I saw something with her but she is without question 
one of the greatest players in Arizona history. I won't say just pitcher. She is one of the greatest players. Tell me about some of your teammates and how good was Allison Johnson? I believe she still holds. People probably know her Allison McCutcheon, correct, now. But I believe she still holds the NCAA record for hits in a season. Um, Nancy Evans, Dolan, Rotz, some of those players. Tell me about some of your teammates. Yeah, well, when I first started, it was actually Susie Para who helped along with Debbie Day that put them on the map. And Susie in the circle was really the leader. And so the first three years I played with her, uh, she was just the leader on our team. And then Nancy and Carrie, like you mentioned, they just kept that winning tradition. Having both of them in the circle was huge. And then you had, because early on, everybody has to be a freshman, right? And they did well but it helped them to have the bats. You see that with some of these freshmen that come in is as phenomenal as they are while they're getting that experience. When you have bats behind them, you can give up some runs and still get those wins. We had, like you mentioned, Amy Chelvold. It was, you know, best slap hitter in the game, really. And then Allison came behind her. And so to be able to have those types of players and you had, like you mentioned, Nancy Evans and all around, she was a defensive player. She was a pitcher. She was a hitter. I mean, one of the best, um, it was just, we were stacked constantly. And even some of the not as big names, you know, my senior, you had Katie Swan who came in was this little freshman that really not a lot of people knew her, but being her, being able to be number two in the lineup, which allowed me to be three in the lineup and being able to get on base and consistently move people allowed us to get Allison Johnson around all the time. And so Jenny Dalton, of course, I cannot stop talking about Jenny. Jenny, one of the best and, and most prolific home run hitters the game has ever seen, along with Laura Espinoza. And so when you look at these players that were defensively up the middle and then the outfield that we had in the speed, at that point, I believe we had the most well-balanced teams. We had the quickest, fastest, best slap hitters who had the best back control you've seen. And then you had the power home run hitters that you get people on base and they can just, you know, put you up by a lot in a quick amount of time. And so, you know, in some of those national championship games, you know, you're facing Amanda Scott from Arizona or from Fresno state. And, you know, she was in the USA program as well. And she would always say, you know, when our big bats weren't doing it she would say I'd hate those little slap lefty hitters that were just the ones that would put the barrel of the ball because she liked the big swings. she felt like she could get her ball to miss the big swings and so having that mix it just gave you so many different options and we ran a lot we stole a lot we turned a lot of double plays so it, it's kind of like the the Oklahoma that you see today they might have a little more depth just because of numbers these days and transfer portal and all that but in terms of just being able to have it all in every aspect of the game, that's why we were on top at the time. That's why UCLA used to be at the top. And that's why the Oklahomas of today are on top. Really interesting you say that because I was going to mention the, you know, Patty Gasso has um, kind of said that some of their best competition is actually inner squad. And for you, it, it could have been the same way. Let's finish with this. I don't think there's any question that Mike Candre is, is the greatest college coach in history. Some people would argue with that. And, you know, if Patty Gasso wins three or four more national championships, maybe so. But as of right now, I, th I think Mike is the guy. So tell me what it was like to play for him. You know, it was the best decision of my life to go play at University of Arizona. I had no idea. And the best part about all of it is he had no idea who I really was because it was his assistant, Larry Ray, who recruited me and saw me. And I think coach was like, all right, I'm going to trust him. And even when I came in, they said, we have five, five people we're looking at and we have two scholarships and whoever says yes first, that's who gets it. And so playing for Mike Candrea, he's like a dad. He's the best leader, the best example. He sets the standard so high, but he gives you every opportunity to reach that standard by preparing you to be your best. He believes in you. He doesn't let you get too high or too low. He builds an amazing culture of unity. And when we go into battle, we can look to him and we can know that everything is steady, that he he's got us to this moment and that he believes in us and that we just look to him for that confidence. I was blessed and fortunate to play for him on team USA 
to win my last Olympic gold medal. And there was nothing better than ending my career at college. And then with Team USA, with him in that third base, you know, coach's box, looking down at me as a hitter. And I, I'm just so thankful. I'm actually writing a book right now called The Gold Standard and 14 Ways to Live a Life of Excellence. And so many of my stories are about him or things that I learned from him. Because to me, I knew that if I live out that leadership style of what I saw and what helped me to become my best, then anything I did would help myself and others around me to become better going forward. And so I try to emulate so many of those characteristics. And to this day, I just talked to him the other day, we have an amazing relationship and it's so, it's so far beyond softball. He made me a better person. And I like to think that I helped him to be a better coach as well, but I, I think it's just relational and the teammates I had and the people he chose, cause it comes down to people. Um, but it was really probably the biggest blessing of my life was to play for him at university of Arizona. Well, he is uh, a treasure um, in the softball world. Um, I, I love how engaged he still is um, and he is one of those people that a coach from whatever school it is can pick up the phone and call Mike and he will help them and however he can, whether it's advice or whether it's a drill or whatever it might be, he he never has portrayed himself as being bigger than the game. And although he is the best, he's just an amazing individual. And I crossed paths with him a couple of times at the Women's College World Series and consider myself fortunate to, to have sat next to him and, and listened to him. So I, I know how fortunate you feel to, to have played for him. So it's an amazing, amazing man. Leah, thank you so much for this amazing look back at the 1997 Arizona Wildcats, without question, you know, to heck with Jenny Finch and those later Arizona teams. This <laughs> team was the best. It, I, I, I would never. There's so many great Arizona teams, but I think this the 97 team has to go into the conversation of one of the best in Arizona history, right? Yeah, I think it's I think it's up there. It is hard when I think back to the different years. It is hard, but they all had their different, yeah, different players, different experiences, and for sure it has to be up there with the numbers that we put up and like you mentioned, the winning record that we had. I think it has to be towards the top. Uh, but Leah, thank you so much for taking the time to to jump on with me and and thank you for all your remembrances and. Uh, hopefully it's been a fun uh, stroll down memory lane for you as well. But thank you very much. Thank you, Roger. And it was because I've forgotten a lot of that stuff. So I was fun hearing you replay it to me. And I'm like, oh, yes, that did happen. So thank you for what you're doing and covering just the past. I know people before me were allowed, allowed me to be able to play at that level. And I know that's continued to grow and grow. So I just I'm thankful for people like you putting a spotlight on those past teams.